very much and what an insane game one to kick off day two here at the international wild card frost Gurin, i just can't believe the game ended that way that was crazy i know our producer threw it to us he's like good luck analyzing that game i well, got you benji well thank you be able to break <laughs> it down but there was so much going on that was an epic almost 50 minute game i think towards the end a dark passage showing some of that experience that they have again region winning the last wild card able to bring it out. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you get to that late into the game, we saw that both of the gold counters were plus, you know, 65, 70K. I mean, your your lead only accounts to so much. Once you're 70K, pretty much every single person is six items, and then it just comes down to execution of composition and what your composition does for yeah, you. Yeah, and that's probably the best place to start. So let's have a look at the competition compositions now. This is what we're working with. You look at the top. <laughs> this composition was awesome from Detonation Focus. Mode. Okay, yeah. So the thing that I really want to point out, and this is one of my favorite combos of all time, is Gragas and Janna. Now, the reason why I love these two champions, especially in Tamda together, is because it's the strongest disengages in the game. Gragas Cask and Janna Monsoon. And so effectively what this meant is you have a long range engage initiation tool like the Equalizer. You have this crazy upfront burst damage. You're babysitting this little guy. And if it ever gets real, you just press R on two champions and you can completely reset a fight. Now, how that works against Dark Passage and why Detonation Focus Me were in control for the majority of the game is because they had very few hard engage options to kind of get on top of or to get past the cask and the monsoon. So how Dark Passage's composition is working is you're effectively relying relying entirely on Twisted Advance. And if you think back to the Season 4 World Championships, Maokai was a huge pick back then, as was Rumble, but you almost couldn't blind pick Maokai if Janna wasn't banned. Because anytime Maokai gets onto the back line to try to deny a lot of that damage, Janna's just going to press R and send them flying. Now, the beautiful thing about Dark Passage's composition, though, is kind of this, uh, this layering of non-committal CC. So what I mean by a non-committal CC is a skill shot that you don't have to follow up. So Amumu, he's committal CC. Yep. When he grabs you with his bandage toss, he's going in. Uh, Elise, she's going to throw out her cocoon. Braum's going to throw out his, his Q. If they hit something that they like, they can pull on it. If they don't, they just kind of wait for the cooldowns to come back up. And Dark Passage were so good at being patient with their cooldowns, not just in their Elise and their Braum, but also in their Varus. Yeah, and certainly a tricky composition to navigate around. We saw that Ceres was doing crazy things on the gangplank. The damage was there for the effectively triple threat comp here from Detonation Focus Me, but some smart play and a lot of very clutch team fights were able to give Dark Passage the win. Yeah, so the first team fight that I really want to look at is just Dark pa or excuse me, Detonation Focus Me's composition working beautifully yep. for them. So again, it's about the reset potential between Gragas and uh, Janna. And then the follow-up long-range initiation with uh, Utapon's Rumble. So again, how this works is that Detonation Focus Me have all the tools that they pick when you fight them. So we can go ahead and roll this one through. So here's the initial catch. Now the cask is actually used to push Crystal in, but he quickly repositioned himself. Kazu now is going to say, I don't like this team fight, flash back out. I swore he used his monsoon, monsoon earlier. Oh, he used it at the very beginning of the fight. Here comes the uh, teleport from Utapon, though. That long-range initiation tool of the equalizer. And then Rokinia, just Whee! the... Uh, <laughs> The aggression to flash forward. Then even longer range initiation tool is going to be the Gragas ultimate that Rokini is going to follow up on, killing uh, Rydal and almost taking out Zeitnacht. Yeah, and that was the cool thing about the comp was that you have a lot of disengage options. They can get aggressive. They've got good range on a lot of their carries, but you saw them chase people for screens with the long range rumble ulti and then the even longer range uh Gangplank ultimate. Yeah, it becomes this weird kind of zone control that you have with this composition where if anyone ever gets to the back line, you can push them away, but then you have so much threat and reach with your equalizer, with your gangplank ultimate, and with your Kogma. Yeah, and all the isolated I mean, you don't even have to be separated, but so like don't have to be isolated, but Clumped up is where the gangplank barrels and the AoE damage and the Cogmore single target damage, all that stuff's going to shine. And we saw that in a lot of the fights that Detonation Focus Me won. Yeah, the terrain control, which we were talking about, about the blue side victory rate, which congratulations, Dark yep. Passage, you guys just broke Finally, that streak. It broke the curse of red side. And that's important as well. Not only do they have now 2-0, over the detonation focus me, but picking up the important win on red side is always good. We do have another replay though for Oscar and again, very back and forth game, very dramatic. So let's go now. This damage that comes out of the equalizer is just absurd. So here we go. You can see that the band-aid has already been laying. We can go ahead and start the replay. And it just melts a lot of the members of Dark Passage, but primarily it splits up the team fight. So you have two members of Dark Passage right here, and then you have the rest of them trying to get on this back. So Ellen gets back there. This is what I was talking about. John is like Maokai on my back line, press R. He's pretty much out of the fight now. 
Unipon does go down, but this cask is going to pick up Corky. Bam, you're dead. But again, just a beautiful equalizer to split the fight. Maokai gets onto the back line, but just the disengage options and tools that Detonation Focus Me have to deal with that. Yep, cop. and same thing again. Uh, Gangplank Ulti also zoning out a big choke of the river. Well well fought. Zaitno did a great job to actually get the double kill there, despite going down. And he'll kind of come up, I guess, as a theme to the rest of this game. We talked about the AD carry player from Dark Passage being a big force for him. He came up very big at the end of this game. He's so impressive mechanically. Just I remember watching uh, VODs of him and seeing his Vayne performance in particular. If that guy ever gets Vayne, it's just devastating. Yeah, pretty surprised we haven't seen any Vayne at all. But still some time left as we do pull up another replay now. This time, things are going a little bit better. Actually, still for Detonation, Focus Me. This actually, yeah, I believe this is the pentakill. Uh, so we had to grab the pentakill because naturally Detonation, Focus Me, they're still in control right now. The gold lead is actually surprisingly close. It has been for the majority of this game. We can go ahead and roll this through. I mean, really, this comes down to just disgusting gangplank damage. Again, resetting the fight. You don't like how something happens. You just press your R button. Udipon making uh, use of choke points for his Band-Aid. But here comes gangplank. Bam. There's the choke point on the Band-Aid to delete one member. Choke points with so many barrels and just the ridiculous... Oh, Saros, please. He, does, he did so much damage. You saw his build in that game. 280 Force Infinity Edge, one of the most expensive builds in League of Legends. But he made it work. But this is the thing that I want to point out. So now, obviously, our last two replays are kind of kind of shift gears because Dark yep. Passage didn't end up winning that game. And it's where the gold is funneled across this triple threat composition. That if Utapon is ever caught out, if Saros is ever caught out, Dark Passage have clear win conditions on how they, they do the team fight. So again, if the if the resets are burned, if the equalizer doesn't land perfectly, if, if he's caught out before he throws it, it's just waiting on those cooldowns. So Dark Passage have the advantage the longer a team fight goes down because they get more cycles through the Cocoon, through the Braum Q, through the Varus Q. Yep, got a bit more consistent damage. We're going to pull up now another replay here. This time, we're going to take a look at the Dark Passage side. They are very close to death here. You can see with their base being caved in, but they managed to hold on. So important to note as well. 20 to 11, but the gold lead is still super tight 69 to 65k and again at some point your gold lead doesn't mean anything the only thing you, you're racing towards is your six items so you can go ahead and roll this one through now what's going to happen here is dark passage are going to make really good catches so elwin gets into the back line Maokai doing a fantastic job. The reset comes through to push him, but the cask actually pushes him directly back onto Rokinia. So that's actually a big mechanical misstep coming out of Asteroid right there. And then from here, because the two resets have already been used, but the team fight is going on lo long enough, Dark Passage are able to get through multiple rotations of their cooldowns and to chase and force Detonation Focus Me off. Yeah, and you saw the front line there as well. We talked about Maokai being an important pick last year. It's still been a very strong pick this year as well. Lots of tanking there from Elwin, even the Braum relatively tanked at that point and when you couldn't they couldn't funnel people through chokes like a big open base you could see that the fights were much harder for detonation focus i'm me. really glad that you brought up the terrain control again pretty much detonation focus me destroyed team fights when they were in the jungle when they were on the dragon pit making the full use of that equalizer but a really untimely cast kind of spelled disaster in that team fight certainly do we have the final fight here as well again very dramatic here in this game and this baron They've already gone there once. They managed to get it the first time. Detonation, focus me. They can smell victory. The base is wide open there on the bottom side as well, but we'll see what happens. This is a gorgeous steal. I believe it's actually from Naru. It is Naru. On this, uh, on this Ferris. But here we go. We can go ahead and roll the clip. Again, just the difference between blue side and red side is how you approach the Baron pit. Crystal does a good job getting into the pit, but it's actually Naru with the piercing arrow that picks it up in the end. Now, the equalizer is used, but... Elwin does such a great job absorbing so much of that damage. And again, now that the resets have been used, that Detonation Focus Me doesn't have them available, Dark Passage are able to chase them down and play janitor around these team fights. Yeah, and then eventually they move on. The game ends not shortly after that, but eventually as, that, as Dark Passage are able to win the next few fights. But a long fought game to get there, but they played very well in clutch moments. And that's exactly what we expect from what yesterday was at least the favorites coming in. Uh, exactly. This is what everyone expected from Dark Passage. They were the favorites going in. They have, I'm going to call it home field advantage. You know, the fact that the international wild card is being held there in their home country. So finally seeing them step up and kind of show what this team is all about, not just on a mechanical level, Zeitna in particular, a huge mechanical ceiling, but just in their macro play to continue to keep themselves in there despite being down so many kills. But they've certainly showed yesterday, and even in that game, honestly, despite the win, they certainly can be beaten, especially in the early game. Zeitnot in particular feels like a very aggressive AD carry, so when he doesn't get going, it seems like things can sort of 
the rail a bit. Not entirely. It gets a bit wobbly. Something that's really cool about uh, the Japanese team versus the Turkish team in particular is their kill participations. So the Japanese highest, the three highest kill participations are going to be Utapon, Kazu, and Rokinia. So the AD carry the support in Utapon, which makes sense. If you watch how they play, it's all about Utapon teleporting and how he impacts that bottom lane. The kill participations on the Turkish teams all five members have over a 75% kill participation. What does that tell you about a team? A, that's a ridiculous stat to have. It tells me that they're great at 5v5ing. And when things go right for Dark Passage, it's in those 5v5s. So it's not surprising to me that in a 50-minute game, they would come out on top when 5v5 is what counts. Yeah, not at all there. So a great win there for Dark Passage. Very nail-biting towards the end. But let's move on to our second match of the day. And if the last one was any indicator, it's going to be quite a long night here, but a very fun one. Bangkok Titans, though, are about to take on Chiefs for the second time in this tournament. And the Chiefs are already up again. They do have to swap sides. They'll be on the red side for this one. But Bangkok Titans have not had as nearly as much success as they might have expected so far. And this match yesterday was just a brutal slugfest. Just fighting, skirmishing all over the field. Yep, so let's take a look at the end of that last game. Just get an idea of where we're at. So this is the end of game screen. Like you can, like you can see... 49 and a half minutes in almost a 50 minute game. The thing that you really need to notice in this screen is uh, 7, 2, and 5 there on Ray Deer. And more importantly, he got Callista. So we're talking about the, the blue side versus the red side. What does that mean? Priority pick, staple bands, and then terrain control. In this game, it's the priority pick, making sure that they got that Callista on initial rotating initial rotation and then punishing the Bangkok Titans. But I guess on the flip side, as far as the game went, Chiefs certainly able to get an edge early. Raider had a great game, especially in the landing phase there with Ejim being aggressive as well. But the Bangkok Titans are always going to do the same thing, but they are very good at it. They held on and fought until the bitter end against the Chiefs. I'm actually really glad that you brought up Ejim in tandem with Raider because I feel like what Spawn says on the desk is very true. That you cannot give the Chiefs Callista, not just because Callista is a powerful champion, but particularly how the Chiefs play Callista with Ejim, how it unlocks him to be super aggressive because he has the Fates Call available to quickly reset his positioning. Yep, and Ejim's been a star player all weekend long. But let's have a look at the other half of that duel lane to start things off. Because Raydeer, he's had some struggles, honestly, in international competition, but he's been on form so far in the tournament. And Raydeer is the shining light of the Oceanic region. This guy is insane. What, he had more kills than two teams combined so in the OPL? Yes, yeah. yeah, so, something like that. And he does ridiculous amounts of damage with his gold income based on the Chiefs. And the Chiefs have had such a dominating season. Yeah, they have. And look back to his bloodthirsty ways there <laughs> on Siva. That was something he was known for locally in the OPL. 11-0-8 was a huge game for the Chiefs there to finish off their night. And Radio, with Egypt in particular, on a big stage like this, the dual lane is performing. And that's the thing. They need to continue to perform. So the Chiefs yesterday had two blue side games, one red side game. Today it's going to be the reverse matchup, and they need to find the red side win if they want to continue to play on top. Yeah, and you have to think they lost unexpectedly to Detonation Focus Me on that red side as well. So they'll be looking to get the win on the blue side now as well. But like we've seen, almost knocking off Dark Passage there for another game in a row, Detonation Focus Me cannot be underestimated. So the Chiefs, they're going to start with Bangkok Titans here in this match. Raider and Ejim certainly look for them to make a big impact. Yeah, and looking across from Raider and Ejim, it's Moss and Lloyd. We've already spoken so much about Moss, his Thresh play in particular. And this is the thing. These are probably the two most bloodthirsty supports in the entire tournament right now. They're just disgusting. Aggressive. They really are. Potentially expect a contested pick there as well from the Thresh, but let's check in with something a little bit more fun as we continue the evening. Of course, the Oceanic team we're playing, clearly we're broadcasting from the Oceanic office despite the international tournament. We have the Oceanic hype train to check in on. Let's see how we're doing today. Kick you into it. <laughs> we're on the rails. It's still there. Might look a little wobbly. It's still good. It's still good. Making sure it hangs out there and keeps chugging along, but don't forget, we'll check in as the night goes through. That can change very quickly. I have to curb this aggression, <laughs> this enthusiasm. Well, look, it's a hype train. We're supposed to be hype about it, as far as I'm concerned. But if the uh, International Day 2 curse is anything to go by, Oceania's hype train could be getting a little bit more wobbly. We'll check in on that as the night progresses. Well, certainly will. We'll see how the train's going, but let's get into the game instead as we throw back to the caster desk. <laughs> 